Leah Barenko. I was very excited and then nervous when I found out I was having two. I didn't know internally things were going wrong. Um, I just knew I felt exhausted, like really exhausted. In January is when the swelling really started to kick, kick up. Um, I was still gaining weight and I just assumed it was the babies growing, the fluid increasing. I don't really know too much about pregnancy. I just kind of figured they're getting bigger. So obviously I'm gonna gain weight knowing now that actually was the fluid. In my head, I was like, I don't think, there's no way anything could be wrong with me. This just must be, pregnancy just must really suck at the end. Um, and I just have to deal with it. So that's kind of how we got into January. I went in for what I thought was gonna be a routine visit. And I remember the doctor looking at me and she just, she said, and I think we're gonna have the babies today. And I remember telling her, no, we're not having the babies today. Like, they're not ready, I'm not ready. And they started strapping on the monitors, so I needed to have three monitors, two heart rates for them, and one for my contractions. I was shocked, like, wh what's, why am I having the kids right now? I didn't understand that she was in distress. I honestly only remember, like you see in the movies, you see the operating lights, operating room lights, and I remember looking up and seeing them as I was being rolled in, and that was the last thing I remember until waking up two weeks later. So I think I was kind of in and out, um, and then my organs started failing, and immediately I was put into a medically induced coma because it was that bad, it was that severe. I had them on January 17th, on January 31st, I got to meet my babies for the first time. It was emotional and overwhelming and exciting, but also I was still in a very fight or flight state, um, I was excited to see them, um, nervous to meet them for the first time. I remember them bringing them to me and they put both of them in my arms and I, I didn't have the strength to hold them so they had to put lots of pillows, so they had to request extra pillows to put underneath my arms. And it was such a great moment. I had to relearn how to walk, I had to relearn how to eat and cut my food and chew it. Um, because of the intubation, my throat um, had to basically learn how to swallow food again and chew. So now I am a type 1 diabetic. I'm kind of a hybrid type 1 diabetic because my pancreas does still create a minimal amount of insulin, but we don't know how much. Doctors and nurses that weren't even treating me would walk in and be like, so you're the miracle mom. And I still didn't quite understand what they meant by miracle mom. Like, what do you mean miracle mom? I had babies, I got sick, whatever. Like. I didn't know that I had almost died. So the first time it was because I almost bled out because of the low platelets um, and the HELP syndrome. My blood wasn't clotting, it just, so when they did the C-section, a C-section is not the best thing for someone with HELP. The second time was because then the HELP kicked in and my kidneys shut down, I mean, when all my organs started shutting down. I'm not sure it could have been preventable, but I think it might have not been as severe. If I was educated on what to look for and how big this could get, I never even considered dying. I never thought that I could get this sick. I, I mean, I never thought that I'd be fighting for my life when I had my kids.